we are Kite Master Island? Primate. Yeah, so I, I, I was just. I was yes, just I do. Why, Give me one. <laughs> I was just wondering why I had said il, ten, or rather in this case eleven level, instead of just saying level eleven Kite Master Primate. Well, in this case, you would be um, level fourteen now, since you spent uh, three years gaining three levels. I thought it took that into account last time. Hmm. Okay, but hmm, let me see. You, I have to be honest. After the last time and all the risk we took and what we found out that we can risk meeting with the corrosive axes and all that, am I the only one who has begun to worry about our legendary blade becoming nothing but mush? Well, it's a risk you'll have to take. It's. Yeah, but I would like a back door, if you will. So if we can find a way to transfer power, I would like to do that. I doubt that will happen, but yeah. Also, uh, since you're now a primate, some of your powers have increased. So, okay. Specifically, both curing and hunt mastery have uh, increased in power. Uh, also, others have also, but these are the two you have. Uh, curing and now allows you to delay the effects of poison, including venom. Hmm. Why? Yeah. It doesn't mean you can cure it, but it will give you time to find uh, or more time to find an antidote or a cure. All right. Note it down. And hunt mastery, thanks to your training, you can now climb surfaces without the aid of uh, climbing aids such as rope. Then why do we still carry a rope around? Oh well. Well, you can always throw it away later if you feel like it. Yeah. It's okay, I have just been noting down. Climb surfaces without the aid of tools. Yep. Your quest for the Lost Stone of Herdos will be fraught with danger for the fortress of Cousin Out has a dark and sinister reputation for being the ruin of many a brave adventure. Make notes as you progress through the story. They will be of great help in this and future adventures. Many things that you'll find will help you during your adventure. Some special items will be of use in future Lone Wolf adventures. Others may be red herrings of no real use at all. So be selective in what you decide to keep. Choose your free in your case, four Magna Carta disciplines would care. For a wise choice enables any player to complete the quest, no matter how weak his initial combat skill and endurance point scores. Successful completion of previous Lone Wolf adventures, although an advantage, is not essential for the completion of this Magna Carta adventure. May the spirit of your ancestors guide you on the path of the Magna Carta. Good luck! Mm. The hour leading up to your departure from LC and are spent checking and double checking your equipment and provisions. But no matter how hard you try to concentrate on these preparations, your mind is constantly invaded by the shadowy image of Kazanaud, an image identical to the vision that appeared the previous evening in the well of the council chamber. You are filled with a deep dread as you contemplate the probable sight of your own grave. However, coupled to this terrible sense of aboning is a far greater and irresistible desire to discover the lost stone of Herdos. Slowly, bef shortly before dawn, your thoughts are disturbed by a knock at the door of your chamber. It is Remoa. The time has come for your mission to begin. You follow him through halls and galleries to a rooftop platform nestling among the crimson towers of the Temple of Truth. Here you are greeted by a young man. He is tall and dark-skinned, with plaited flaxen hair and sharp cat-like eyes, and he wears the gold and scarlet tunic of a Vakeros, a warrior magician of Desi. Hail, Pilo, says Remoa, bowing to his proud young man. Hail, my lord Remoa, he replies respectfully. We are ready to sail. The first rays of the dawn light shimmer along the golden hull of a magnificent skyship that hovers above the rooftop platform. As the hum of its powerful engine rises, you thank Remoa and bid him farewell before following Lord Pido to the boarding ladder to the edge of the platform. Once safely on board, the skyship rises into the chill dawn air, and Lord Remoa and the Tower of Truth shrink swiftly beneath its golden keel. You look down with growing fascination as the sleek bat-winged craft passes over the circling waters of the Elsian Canal and speeds northward above the jungle of Central Desi. As the grey chasm of Gorgoron looms into view, splitting the emerald green land like a deep and terrible wound, Lord Pyto joins you at the rail. Time passes in conversation, and you learn much about the people of this untamed land and their history. 
You learn that the Elder Magi are all that remain of a race of great magicians who ruled central Magnamont many thousands of years ago. They were wise and powerful, and their leadership was great until their numbers were decimated by a plague that swept across the world. Those who survived sought refuge in Desi and have lived here in the mountains and the jungle ever since. The Vakaris are native soldiers of Desi who have been taught the art of battle magic by the Elder Magi to help them defend the northern border against invasion by the warlike Vasagonians. When you tell Lord Pyder of your own past battles with the Desert Warriors, you sense a sadness within him. How I wish my brother Kazin were here with us now, he says, staring for thoughtfully towards the distant horizon. He could tell many a brave tale of the Great Desert Wars. You ask what has become of his brother. There is a long pause before we reply solemnly, Kazan out. Hmm. Oops. The land of Desi is now spread out beneath you like a gigantic map. To the northwest you can see the foothills of the Karkos range and a faint ribbon-like glimmer that is the river Deutsch. To the east, a bank of grey storm clouds advanced unchecked across a sea of jungle vegetation. Shortly before noon you sight your destination. The low domed buildings of Herdos appears on the horizon, followed by the waters of Lake Kor and a blackened finger of rock upon which sits Kazan Aud. Even at this great distance, the awesome sight of the terrible fortress sends a chill along your spine. Oh dear, the castle is giving us the finger. In a way, <laughs> I suppose. Lord Pyder orders his crew to prepare for landing, and within the hour, the great skyship is casting its shadow upon the flagstones of the Plaza of Herdos. You are welcomed by Lord Arden, Elder of Herdos, and a detachment of his Vaqueros guards. They escort you through the streets of the ancient town, past the tiny stone-walled dwellings of fishermen and miners, to a quay where a glass dome tower several stories high commands access to the busy harbor. But as you enter the tower, you notice that the glass dome radiates a greenish light that, in spite of the blinding glare of the midday sun, can be seen quite clearly. Later, as the sun sinks slowly beneath the peaks of the mountains, the light emanating from the tower becomes more visible, covering Lake Kor with an umbrella of ghostly luminescence. Lord Arden explains, this tower, together with five others that encircle the lake, generates a shield of magical energy that imprisons the evil of Kazanaut. No creature, living or dead, can enter or leave the Isle of Kor as, so long as our shield remains intact. We dare not lower our guard, and to allow it to land on the island, we have devised a means by which you may pass through the shield unharmed. He takes a gem the size of a small apple from the pocket of his silken robe and places it in your hand. It is a dull, translucent red, but within its core, a swirling mist of glittering sparks flicker with gold and silver fire. Ah. It is a power key. Guard it well, for so long as you possess it, you may fulfill your quest. Lose it, and you will never escape from the Isle of Kor. And it's a special item, by the way. You got it. Let me see. A power key that is the special item. Yeah. Let me just add that down. At midnight, my Vakaros will take you by boat to the edge of the shield. On board is a small coracle in which you can pass through the shield and make your way to the Isle of Kor. We shall pray for you, Lone Wolf. Midnight finds you standing on the deck of a square rigged fishing boat. The sighing, the sighing night wind and the creak of rope and timber are the only sounds that accompany you across the black waters of Lake Kor. You arrive at a wall of shimmering green light, the power shield. The Vakaros whisper their goodbyes and you paddle through the wall drawing closer with every stroke to the sinister island fortress. Two hundred yards from the glistening black shoreline, you know two places where you can make a landing. Do you wish to land on, at a stone jetty to the west of Kazanaut, or to land at a sheltered bay at the east of Kazanaut? Anything I have to say, I get the feeling that this thing might actually be... Sheltered bay. Yeah, the sheltered bay, because the idea of anything that looks like a rocket that might be a part of this thing, I'm not so sure. Vivid green flashes of forked lightning and the rumble of distant thunder add menace to the towers and sheer stone walls of Kazan Out. Many of the roofs and turrets are in ruin. Their twisted beams and floors lie open to the sky, giving the fortress a burned out and deserted appearance. I have to ask, what the fuck actually lives in there? This makes it sound like it was the freaking castle from the Castlevania series. It's Count Chocula. Oh no! <laughs> Thank you for spoiling the whole dread and awe, Kimenea. 
<laughs> you are welcome. I will be here all week because I have no, nothing better to do with my life. <laughs> As you approach the tiny bay, with, which is tucked inside the shelter of a horseshoe reef of jagged black rocks, your eyes caught by the glow of tiny red lights moving in the shadows at the base of the fortress wall. You notice a dry hollow among a group of rocks close to the shore that offers an ideal hiding place for your little boat. Silently, you disembark and drag the coracle upon the beach towards the rock. Seconds later, you are halted dead in your tracks by the sound of muffled squealing. Sweat breaks out on your bro brow when a flash of lightning reveals scores of small red eyes close to the sand. A seething flood of rats, each as large as a puppy but gaunt and half-starved, is scurrying down the beach towards you like a torrent of black water. Shit. Find something to stand on and then start swinging. With a pounding heart, you search for some means of escape from this ravenous horde of squealing, snapping rodents. Do you wish to climb over the rocks and escape across a deserted beach? Do you wish to drag your boat back into the lake and paddle away from the bay? Or would you prefer to stand and fight the unrushing flood of giant rats? Well, I do not know about the first option because I do not know if that flock of rats actually want to eat the boat. I dare to doubt it. Huh. In that case, I would say I go for the first option. Agreed. A new sound is added to the terrible squeals of the hungry rats. The sound of splintering wood. In less than oh, a minute, you your, small, your boat is completely devoured, leaving no trace of it ever having existed. Oh, so you do eat boats. Rats eat boats. That's that you. is what happens when my suspicions are confirmed. It sucks. Hey, it turns out you were right all along, Rana. <laughs> the jacket so rocks cut into your hands. What a miracle. Your you were actually right about something. Hey, it's easy in, there. It's easy there, tiger. Incredible. Easy there, tiger. Bad kitty, bad kitty, down, down. Well, it wouldn't be the first time Rana's paranoia actually has paid off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that was actually funny. But it has happened before where you were afraid, oh no, this could go wrong, and it actually has helped out. It's just you sometimes have trouble sorting in what kind of panic is reasonable and what oh, kind yeah, of panic yeah. is not. We, 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 can, we can agree on that. Yeah. But fearing that the starving rats of a mad place filled with dark magic might want to eat your boat is not that crazy. <laughs> the jacked rocks cut into your hands and knees, but you're oblivious to the pain as you clamber across them to the beach beyond. You set off as a run, but the fine black sand closes around your ankles and your legs ache violent with every desperate step. A glance over your shoulder warns you that the pack is gaining ground rapidly. They will soon be on you before you reach the rocky base or cast out. Then suddenly the squealing stops. The black tide has halted at the edge of the beach. The white teeth snap on empty air and hungry eyes watch your every movement, but every single one of them is rooted to the rock. As you turn to make your escape, you wonder why the rats no longer pursue you. Less than 10 feet ahead lies the horrific answer to your question. A great toad-like face staring unblinkingly into your eyes as it emerges from the shadow to bask in the green light that illuminates the beach. Its body, pale and bloated like a huge fat worm, slithers into view and you shot at the sight of the open sores that disfigure its skin. And we got a picture. Great! Great. 